we were saying, a world first space mission to bring rocks back from the far side of the moon has successfully made a return to planet Earth. It's back. It's back. China's lunar probe landed in the inner Mongolian desert a few minutes ago after nearly two month long mission fraught with risk. And we've got someone here to talk us through it. Professor John Pernay Fisher, who specialises in lunar geology at the University of Manchester. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Smile, you're really excited about this, <laughs> aren't you? Yes, it's very cool. Absolutely. As you said, indeed, a world first. Why does this matter so much, this particular return? So this is the first time that we've got samples directly from the lunar far side, the bit of moon that we can't see up in the sky. So from a technical point of view, it's, it's obviously quite complicated. And so it represents a good technical accomplishment. But also from a sort of a scientific point of view, the samples that are brought back are going to be quite unique. Shall we watch the pictures? Sure. So just in the last hour or so, just explain what's happening here. Um, so, yeah, so this is the canister. It's about two kilograms of rock uh, that's touching down in the desert just now after its sort of 20-odd day uh, cruise from the moon uh, back to here, I suppose. And, there and it, it is. looked like a safe, safe touchdown there. So what, what will happen to those lunar rock samples? Because presumably they will have to be handled with extreme care. Yes, so um, they'll, they'll probably be all sealed up, so they won't see the Earth's atmosphere or anything like that. They'll be sort of perfectly preserved as they were collected and they'll be whisked away to a special lab um, where they'll be very carefully uh, unpacked and, and, and sort of having a quick look at what's inside, I suppose. And what will they be looking in those rocks to see? What are they hoping to find out? Well, more than likely, there'll be a bunch of volcanic material, which is primarily what we find on the moon. Um, but the main reason why this particular batch of samples is exciting is because we think that the lunar far side is geologically very different to the near side. And obviously, all the samples we have are from the near side, from Apollo, from the Russian uh, missions, and from the, even the last uh, Chinese mission that was a few years ago in 2020. So hopefully, this can unlock a lot of important questions relating to uh, these sort of big picture concepts, such as how a planet's built in the first place. You know, why is there a crust that we're stood on today on, on, on planet Earth, for instance? And Does also ice, if there's ice there. And the, the plan is, is to, put, to put man on the moon or Indeed. humans on yes, the moon once absolutely. again. So why is that important? Well, obviously, if there's ice about, then that is a really important resource for, for humans to use, obviously, for drinking, but also for rocket fuel as well. Because ultimately, the, the main goal of all the various space agencies across the globe is to have some kind of semi-permanent uh, research base similar to what we have in Antarctica. Um, so obviously if there's water there, then that's, that's great to use. But also this water is very old, it's billions of years old. So from a scientific point of view, this water can tell us something really important about why there's water in this neck of the woods in the solar system in the first place, which is oh, obviously really exciting. What could be in that water? There's a lot of organic compounds and the sort of building blocks that may have sort of uh, formulated that they may have meant that life could start in the first place here on Earth. And so understanding that obviously is really important. This is obviously a Chinese mission. Um, will these samples be sort of shared around the world? Sort of how collegiate is the kind of space fraternity? Yeah, no, it's very collegiate. It's, it's, it's definitely a lot more collaborative than it was uh, back in the space race days of the 60s and 70s. So obviously Chinese researchers will have first dibs on these samples to have a look and eventually if they follow the same model as, as the last mission, Chang'e 5, then they'll be opened up to the international community to study. So very exciting. So the little granules, little bits could be what, shared around labs around the world? Absolutely. So yeah. you might get some. That's the hope. Really? <laughs> Eventually. It, well, how does that work? Is there a kind of bidding process or something? Uh, yes, yeah, so typically, and it's the same for uh, applying for Apollo samples too. We write a little proposal, say this is the sort of science we want to do, and then our panel will, will review that and say, yep, this is good science or no. I can tell by your face, you'd be pretty excited about <laughs> getting your hands yes. on a bit of lunar rock, wouldn't you? It'd be very cool, absolutely. <laughs> It sounds like this is, this is the latest in a series of developments mm. as far as the moon. These are exciting times to be a oh, lunar geologist. Absolutely, yeah. It's been a huge resurgence of interest in the moon, yeah. And particularly led by, as I said, this, this, uh, this mission to get humans with two feet back on the ground on the moon. Yeah, after a few years, it was sort of back in the 60s when it was all going, and then there seems to have been a bit of a lull. But for people like you that specialise in this, it, yeah. it just must be the best of times. Yeah, it's, it's really exciting, and I think we're going to get a lot of great science in the next few decades to come. I mean, I think ultimately as well that the Moon, if we want to eventually get to Mars, the Moon is a really important stepping stone because it's, it's close enough that we can test technologies. It's a, basically, it's a great launching pad to then go off to do whatever we want to do on Mars. So I think it's, it's an important piece of our sort of space exploration puzzle, really. So when would you expect man or woman to end up on the moon again? Well, uh, the NASA program called Artemis uh, is hoping to land people in about 2026, 2027, that kind of time frame. Uh, and I think the Chinese Space Agency are looking to land people by about sort of 2030. So 
Hopefully by the end of the decade, we'll see two feet on the ground How there. much would you love to be one of them, Tom? I mean, that would be very cool. Yes, that would be, uh, that would be remarkable. <laughs> but in the meantime, let's hope you get your hands on a, a little bit of yes. Lunar Rock. <laughs> Thank you so much for being Thank here. You. Thank, Thank you. you.